fitting is that song to what God has been speaking in my spirit for today. Amen? All right. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. We thank the Lord once again for this beautiful day. And, you know, they, they have a song that the uh, kids always sing, rain, rain, go away. Come again. Come again another, day. another day. No, 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 no. When it rains, I think about the cow that eat the grass that grows. I think about the chickens as they get fed the corn that grows in the field and all that happens because it rains, amen? So thank God for the rain. There was no rain, nothing would grow, amen? So we thank God for the rain. If you will get your Bibles real quick and turn to Luke chapter 13, we're gonna read verses 10, through 17. Luke chapter 13. We're going to read verses 10 through 17. And as you're getting that, I just always want to thank again our pastor for being here today and thank him for this uh, opportunity to speak the word of God in his mother, uh, our, our mother of the house. Mother, thank you for being here today. Amen. Always appreciate you. Amen. Everybody got it? Luke 13. Verses 10 through 17. If you got a pen, there are some specific words that I want you to underline as we look at these scriptures. So get your pen, and we're going to read. It says, now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. I want you to underline that word, synagogue. He was in the church teaching. On the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. I want you to underline that word, 18 years. And was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. I want you to underline that word, bent over. In, in no way raised, could raise herself up. She was in the church for 18 years with this problem. In the church, saints, for 18 years with this problem and could in no ways raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, underline that word, saw her, he called her to him and said to her, woman, you are loose from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight. Underline that word, made straight. And glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue, underline that word, the pastor, the priest, the overseer, the bishop, the ruler of the synagogue. For 18 years, this woman had this issue. She had this problem. And in one day, Jesus saw her. And he laid hands on her. And he said, you are loose. But the pastor that was in that church for 18 years stood up. And let's see what he said. Where are we at? Okay, 14. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. He was mad at Jesus because of what he had done. Because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, underline that word. He said to the crowd, the crowd did not heal this woman. So why did the ruler address the crowd and not the one who did it. He said to the crowd, there are six days on which men ought to work. Therefore, come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath. Then the Lord answered him. See, he spoke to the crowd. Jesus didn't 
didn't have to speak to the crowd because it wasn't the crowd who stood up and said something. So Jesus went straight to the problem. He answered him and said, hypocrite. Does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman, underline that word, ought not, ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham whom Satan has bound. And then Jesus said, think about it. This woman was bound for 18 years by Satan. You pastor, you apostle, you ruler of the synagogue, think about what you have just said to me or to the crowd. Think about it. For 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath. And when he said these things, all his adversaries. Wait a minute. All his adversaries. The people that was in the church was not his adversaries. It was the religious people of that time. Jesus never called a sinner a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. Jesus never woed a sinner. It was the religious people, mm. the pastors, Minister Paul, the apostles. Yeah. It was those people who was his greatest adversaries. Mm. Isn't it strange that the people who are supposed to lead us in the presence of God are the adversaries mm. of the men who they had prophesied would come and save the people from their sins? Yeah. It was the religious people. Yeah. And the Bible says all his adversor, 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 adversaries yeah. were put to shame and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. My message today is down for the cause. Okay, then. All right, then. Down for the cause. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this word that you have given your son to give to your people. And Father, I pray that your anointing will not only stay here, Lord, but it will reign throughout this sanctuary. Mm -hmm. That there will be a release in this place, Lord God. That your people will no longer be bound by circumstances. Mm -hmm. No longer be bound by situations. But because where the Lord is, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, Lord God. And that they will be loose, never chained again by whatever it is yes. that they're going through from this day forward and forevermore. Yep. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. amen. When you think about the word down, that word down usually is a negative word. Mm -hmm. It says that you are unhappy. It says that you are in distress. It says that you are a depressed person, miserable when you think about the word down. But see, where I grew up, mm -hmm. in the neighborhood where I grew up, uh -huh. when we say the word down, it does not mean that you are depressed. Uh -uh. It does not mean that you are miserable right. or distressed. Uh -huh. It just simply means that I'm in. Right, right, right. I'm down. Got I got you. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. That's what it means in my neighborhood when they say the word down. And when you think about the word cause, the word cause means to have a deep commitment to 
defend or to advocate or to just simply make some happen. And I can remember my oldest brother is here today. We grew up on Mercy Drive. And we would make packs with each other saying, hey man, I got you back. If anything, if, if somebody jump on you, they got to jump on me. Wow. Simply what, what we were just saying, I'm down for the cause. The cause. Yeah. Yeah. And they had a party uh, at, at, at this uh, person's house. And we all went to the party. We was all jamming. And see, I was one of those persons, people, that when you come out with a dance, Go ahead, now we know. I will master that dance. And never challenge me because I will put you to shame. So we were at the party, we were getting down, but we were dancing for hours. I was doing that dance, I forgot what dance was, or whatever it was, but I was doing it. And so I was challenged by this guy that wanted to challenge me, Sister Cheryl. I said, okay, no problem. You want a challenge? So he did his thing, and when he finished, it was over. Oh, it was over. I took the floor and I began to do my thing and the boy got mad because everybody was cheering me and was laughing at him. So he wanted to fight. So he started talking noise. And being who I was, I started talking noise. And somebody got word to my big brother. Oh, oh. And all of a sudden, y'all, Junior came out of nowhere. Nowhere. Because he was down. He was for the cause. For the cause. Ha! Ah. Ah. Ha! And Junior rode a bicycle. Oh, you remember that, Junior? <laughs> Junior rode a bicycle. <laughs> and Junior <laughs> jumped off that back. He said, hey, man. Hey. He said, that's my brother. Use some kind of choice words at the time. And see, Junior don't ask questions. When Junior say what he gonna say, it's all over. That's it. He ain't got no more questions. Before I know it, Junior, boom! Oh, oh. hit the boy with one punch. Junior. Junior, he went night night, and he went night night. <laughs> he went and night. And that's the word in that movie Friday. <laughs> <laughs> he got knocked the heck out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't mess. Ah! Don't mess with Junior. Your brother, hey. called Junior, is down, down for the cause. For the cause, amen? They call he was ready to defend and to advocate on uh -huh. my yeah. behalf. Uh -huh. He did it. Now, that was Junior. Uh -huh. When we go to the Bible, uh -huh. we come to a young man by the name of David. Oh, okay. And David was anointed to be the king of Israel. And David would go out with the sheep. And when the bear came, when the lion came, David had a deep commitment oh, yeah. to defend what was put in his possession. Mm -hmm. And so the children of Israel and Saul had went out to fight the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And the Philistines had this tall giant by the name of Goliath. Goliath. And for 40 days, the Bible says that the children of Israel was on one side of the mountain and the Philistines was on the other. Oh. And this giant stood in the middle and the Bible called him a champion. And I looked that up. What that meant was the Philistines would not fight when they go against an opponent. Goliath would come out and he would say, okay, there's no need for all of us fighting. You just bring one person out here to fight me. And if I, and if he beat me, then we will serve you. But if I beat him, then you would serve us. And the word Goliath means he was a soothsayer. He had the gift of gab. He can con you into doing things that you know that you cannot do. And so Goliath he was a champion because every time he would win the battle. Every time. Well, when David went to this battle sent by his, his, his father to see about his brothers, David overheard this man called Goliath. 
defying the children of Israel. And so they had told David what would be done if, the, if anyone killed Goliath. What the king would give him pertaining to his father's house. And so David began to walk around and say, is it true? And they begin to tell David, yes, this is what the king will do if you kill this giant. Now, David went to his oldest brother. And the Bible says that his older brother began to get mad at David. And I believe David told him, you're mad at the wrong person. You should be mad at Goliath, not me. And David said, what have I done? Is there not a cause? Oh, he down for the cause. David was down for the cause. And because of what David said, word got back to Saul. And they brought David before Saul. And David began to tell his testimony mm -hmm. about how he overcame the bear and the lion. And he said, this uncircumcised Philistine will be just like one of them. Yeah. And so Saul began to be convinced. Yes, he and he began to put David on his armor. And the Bible said that David, he could not walk because he had not tested the honor. Saints, people will try to put things on you. Oh, what's it say? That you are not ready for. That you have not tried and you yes. have not yes. been tested yes. with yes. this thing. Yes. So don't try to go with what they say. You go with what's been proven. Uh -huh. And so David began to take off the armor. And he went with what God had already delivered him with. And he went to the battle. And Goliath looked at David. And he began, in my words, began to laugh. <laughs> he said, you come out against me? He said, I'm, I'm a dog. That's what the Bible said. He said, I'm a dog. That means he was hard. He was ready. And he said, David, I'm going to take your flesh and I'm going to feed it to the birds. Oh, the bird. And David <laughs> said, oh, he said, you come with me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, mm -hmm. but I come yeah. with you yeah. in the name of the God yeah. of Israel. Yeah. And the Bible says that David ran Just like my brother, he was convinced that he was going to knock that boy out. And when you are convinced that God is going to do it on your behalf, you don't shout. You begin to run to the say? Yes. Yes, sir. And the Bible said David took five smooth stones. And he took his slingshot. And it hit Goliath right in the forehead. Yes, yes. And Goliath fell to the ground. He went night night too. He went night night, sister so Angie. <laughs> and David took his sword what he did, what he did. and he cut off the giant's head. Oh. See, you can't let the giant play possum. What you say? You can't let your situation play possum. What you say? You got to take that sword and cut the head off. Yes. And when David cut the head off, he brought it back to Saul. And Saul said, Whose child is you? <laughs> and David was rewarded with the king's reward. Because he was simply down. For the call. For the call. Yeah. Now, if you flip the Bible over a couple of pages, uh -huh. you run into a little lady by the name of Esther. Uh huh. Now, the word Esther means star. She was a shining 
star. She was so beautiful that they named her Star. So Esther had married King Ahar uh, 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 I want to say Aharis's. That's his name, Aharis's? Something like that. King Aharis's. Now King Aharis's had a right-hand man named Haman, who he named to be in charge over all his province. And Haman, just like some people, they get the big head when they get promoted. And so they want everybody now to bow before them. But Mordecai would not bow or pay homage to Haman. Uh -huh. And word got back to Haman that Mordecai, which was Esther's uncle, uh -huh. would not bow or pay homage. Though they asked him day after day as though he was going to change his position. Well, he didn't change. Well, Haman went to King, the king, Aharisus, and said that there is a people here who do not follow the laws of the king and do not submit to the ordinances of the king. So, king, what we need to do, we need to distinguish, we need to disterminate all the Jews, not just Mordecai. We want to kill all of them. And he made a decree and got the king's signet ring. Yes, yes. Now when the king gave you his signet ring, y'all, oh, that means whatever the decree is, it is done. Yeah, the and the word got out and they began to send the word to, throughout the whole land. And they rushed and they, they made a day oh. on the 13th. This is where we get Friday the 13th from, y'all. Oh. On the 13th, we are going to kill all the Jews in one day. And that's where the movie Purge come from too. We will purge all of them. It's a day of purging for the Jews. So Mordecai tore his clothes and he began to mourn and he began to yell. And so Queen Esther did not know what was going on. Sometimes we can be in our comfort zone. While others are hurting around us uh -huh. and not even know sometimes, sometimes. what's going on. Mm -hmm. But word got back to her. And so she tried to comfort Mordecai. Mm -hmm. And Mordecai would not be comforted. And Mordecai told her what was going on. Uh -huh. And then she sent back word to Mordecai and said that now everybody know that when the king is in his inner court. Uh -huh. And if anybody come before the king. Without being sown, he had but one law. Put them to death. Except he extend his golden scepter. So, actually, Queen Esther was like, I can't do it. There's nothing I can do. Mordecai said by word, and he said, don't think, Esther, that help will not come from another source. God is going to deliver his people. He said, and you and your father's house will not escape what Haman is planning to do. Wow. And he said, think it not that you was not sent here for such a time as this. And so Queen Esther mm -hmm. sent word out and said, I want all the Jews to fast for three days. No food no water. And me and my maids going to do the same thing. And she said, I'm going to go before the king. And if I perish, I perish. That lets me know that Esther was down for the cause. Because she had a deep commitment to advocate or defend the Jews. And if you read the story, when she went before the king, remember her name is Star. The star walked in. The king stood up and he put out his golden scepter. And she went and she touched the scepter. And this is what the king said. He said, Queen Esther, 
you are the star, baby. You are the star. And he said, what is it that you want? He said, I will give you up to half of the kingdom. Because she was down for the cause. I'm telling you, saints, if you commit your ways to the Lord, he said he will give you the desires of your heart. All you got to do is just be down for the cause. Amen. Now we go to Luke chapter 13, verse 10. And here we find Jesus in the synagogue, in the church, on the Sabbath, teaching the people of God. And he saw a woman who had an infirmity for 18 years. She had this thing for a long time. Isn't it funny how churches all around the country are filled more than some to capacity. Capacity. And people go in Yet they leave uh -huh. the same way. Yeah. She had this problem for 18 years, Ooh. going to the church and going back home. Mm. And not only did she have this problem for 18 years, by this time she was bent over wow. mm. and could not straighten herself. You can be in a situation so long. for so long, so long that this thing now has you bent over. Uh -huh. And to bend, be bent over means that you've given up wow. and you have subsided oh. to oh. the problem. Wow. And now you have become comfortable bent over. Bent over. What are you been over with, saints? Oh. What issues got you bent over? You've been in the church a long time. And you are still bent over, bent over because of these things. And the Bible says that Jesus saw her. And he said... Woman, you are loosed from your infirmities. And he took his hand and he touched her and he straightened up her situation. I don't know what you've been dealing with, saints. You know what you've been in. You know what you've been battling. Jesus wants to straighten out your situation. He came to deliver, to heal, and to set free because he was down for the cause. He began to advocate on this woman's behalf. Day in and day out, Sunday after Sunday, for 18 years, she was coming to the church and going back home with this problem. The church is supposed to be a hospital, as we say. The church is supposed to be a place where we come to be healed, where we come to get a word from the Lord, where we come to be rejuvenated. This woman was bound for 18 years. Now, I can relate to this woman about the pain that she was dealing with. Because 
For a long time, I've been having back issues. And every now and then, it would flare up. But I wouldn't go to the doctor. I'll just bear it out and wear it out because I said, it's going to pass, it's going to go, and, 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 it, and, it, and it do. But this time, it was so painful uh -huh. that it didn't go away. Mm. And not only was it just in my back, mm. it went to my buttocks. Oh, well. And then it went down the side of my leg. Mm. They call that degenerative scoliosis. Wow. It's when your spine over time begins to wear out. And if you don't exercise, and if you don't do the things that will strengthen your spine, it will cause back problems. And it usually happens to people that are in their 50s or older. So this woman had this pain for a long time. And so I dealt with it, y'all. But this time, when I get out of bed, it hurts. And I say, I got to do something about this. Isn't it funny how we tolerate things? Because what you tolerate, you will never change. Oh. To tolerate something is to accept. To allow something to happen that you don't like and to do nothing about it. People are in relationships that they are tolerating. What's it say? And they know the relationship is not good. They know this relationship is toxic, but they are tolerating yes. it. Yes. Amen. They don't like it, mm -hmm. but they won't change it wow. because they are tolerating it. Yes, they are. Yes, we are. What you tolerate, you will never change. People are in a career that you are tolerating. You've been saying for years, I gotta do something. But you have become comfortable. And you are tolerating that job. And as long as you tolerate it, you will never change it. But when that thing becomes painful, see you ain't the old folks say, she ain't hurt enough. That's why she's still with him. She ain't hurt enough. Because when she gets sick and tired what you say? of being sick and tired, yeah. of being sick and tired, you preaching now. she going to do something about it. Yes, she will. that situation. Right. What are you tolerating? Uh, what you tolerating? What are you putting up? What situation are you in that God has been speaking to you about? <laughs> and you just sitting there tolerating it. Yeah. It's like walking in a sewer and smelling the stench and staying there and now you don't even smell it anymore. People been telling you, man, you got to do something about that. But you tolerate it. And as long as you tolerate your situation, uh -huh. you will not change it. Amen. Reminds me of Moses. Moses grew up in the courts of Pharaoh. But Moses was a Hebrew. And he saw how the Egyptians were treating the Hebrews, day after day, beating them, discouraging them, despising them. And one day, Moses couldn't take it anymore. He couldn't tolerate it anymore. And he rose against the Egyptian and he killed him. You would never kill him. As long as 
you are tolerating it. It's your anger sense. You ain't mad enough. You ain't had enough yet. Why wait until it gets to the point where you can do nothing about it? Mm. Saints, don't let it get to that point. What you say? You gotta be down for the cause. You gotta sense, you gotta have a sense of urgency and say that I've been like this for all this time and nothing has changed. The relationship been going back and forth and nothing has changed. We are still in the same situation when I met you 18 years ago. says that the ruler of the synagogue, uh -huh. the one who should have spoken to the woman, mm -hmm. counseled the woman, or tried to get the woman some kind of help. But see, when you got religion, don't you mess with my program. All right. All right. We got a set of pro how this program going to go, and you bet not change or interrupt what we're doing. Come in, let us do what we're going to do, our traditions, and go home. He got upset with Jesus because this woman was loose from her infirmities. When God comes in your church and he messes up your program, and you, instead of rejoicing uh -huh. because of what God has done in somebody's life, you begin to say, we got to stick to the program. Mm. God looks at you mm. and he says, you hypocrite. Mm. You are a hypocrite. Yet, he was the set man of the house. Jesus don't care how much prestige you have in church. Amen. He don't care how many churches you have under your uh, uh, bishopness. You better say it then. Are the people being set free? Or are you tied down to your Churches around here. Got all these programs, Pastor. Mm -hmm. We don't have but one thing. We come in, we praise God. Yes, if God moves, we take up offering, we hear the word of God, and we go home. But some of these churches, they got this, and then we gotta do this, and then we gotta do this. It's almost like a museum. Do y'all know what a museum is? A museum is a place where you go to see artifacts. And you don't act up in a museum, you act cordially. You don't raise your voice in a museum or they will put you out. Some of these churches are nothing but museums. Thank God for freedom ministries. Amen. If someone was hurting right now, I will stop this sermon and we will begin to defend and advocate on your behalf. You be down for the cause. Freedom ministries is down for the cause. cause. This is not a museum. But the Spirit of the Lord is here. And God 
Jesus called them hypocrites. Wow. And I want to leave you with this. What cause are you down for? If it itches, stretch it. God has been itching some things in your heart. He's been speaking to you about some things. And you say, how God speaks to me? He speaks to you when you're sleeping. He'll speak to you by TV. He'll speak this word that God has been speaking to you. You can't run from it. He's been scratching at you. And now it's time to scratch that itch. For a long time, Pastor Gurley, before you became a lawyer, you had an itch because you hated to see your people taken advantage of. But you couldn't do nothing about it because you was just a pal, supervisor. But God had been burning something in you. And so your wife encouraged you to become a lawyer. And because you passed the bar, that itch got scratched. Uh -huh. Saints, God say today, I will scratch that itch. I want to heal that infirmity. It's time for you to come forward. It's time for you to quit making excuses. It's time for you to quit tolerating what you're going through. One of the greatest inventions mm, go ahead, to a truck driver is a back scratcher. Because when you're driving that truck, you itch and pass them. You take this back scratcher, put it down your back. <laughs> Am I right, son? Listen, saints. I don't know what God has been scratching at your heart today. All right. But it's time for you to get that itch scratched. All right, it's time for you to be down for the cause. Yeah, yeah. And God wants to loose you yeah. and straighten up yeah. your situation. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you.